Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again with another Market Watch Investments video tonight. Going to be reviewing a pretty, pretty diverse variety of plethora of things tonight. So it's going to get things kicked off here with one of my favorite sets. You guys know I'm a big fan of Legendary Collection sets. Today is going to be Legendary Kaiba. I reviewed this pretty thoroughly um, throughout the months, but I just I feel so compassionately about this set. As with all of the legendary collection sets in general, so um, we can see here it looks like S39 is taking the top ranking spot here for about 20. Delinquent Duo is actually going up, um, maybe not necessarily going up, but it's holding a really good price point value. If it really is around 12, 13 bones, this is the secret rare reprint version. Of course, we have the OG original Ultras from Magic Ruler, which are very much collector collector's items now seeing how that set is just ancient and these are sitting around 15 so that's pretty incredible um not really a bun not really any stacks here on the first page only two pages so probably in its own merit alone why it's holding the 15 dollar price point so i think that's pretty cool um i don't remember it uh, hitting this high so delinquent duo secret rare is 15 bones which is a pretty solid price point Moving on here, um, there's we have several different versions of Ultra Ash Blossom, so I'm not going to really go into this, but naturally, um, I think this is one of the first reprints of Ash Blossom. Of course, we have the Secret Rares from Maximum, uh, Maximum Chaos, and then I think this was a, either those, the, sec, the third reprint, because I think the, the first reprint was actually the Super Rare in, in Shadows and Valhalla, so... Uh, do you want to take a look here at Drill and Lockbird because um, this is... I'm still waiting for a secret rare reprint of this. I really want a secret rare reprint of this. This is one of my um, more favorable hand traps. So I think this, this card is still very, very powerful. And it's about sitting around 10. I personally prefer the super rares from the OTS pack. But these are about 10, so they're holding a relatively good price point as well. This is a very large set, so I'm not going to go specifically into detail with every single card that I want to feature. But I just, again, I, the whole point of these videos is just to kind of quickly showcase things and kind of just spotlight things so you guys can go and take a look at them if you find them interesting later on. Sage with Eyes of Blue is kind of starting to calm down. I feel like it was trickling up for a bit. It's kind of starting to level off. I actually just sold... Um, some secret versions from White's Revenge and also the original OG Ultras. Trade in is this is calming down. Uh, I do want to take a look at this because the last time I reviewed this trade in was like around like almost twenty dollars. It was like fifteen twenty bones. Um, all the versions are pretty much going up. This obviously being the uh, highest rarity as a secret rare, and it's definitely calmed down a lot. It's sitting at about seven eight. It's about eight and then quickly jumps up to 10 after that though so still holding relatively good value um five plus pages on the market so plenty to go around um i i don't really know like i, I really love trade in a lot i mess around a lot with level eights because rank rank eight xyz's are my favorite extra deck monsters and uh trade in is just great turbo power for blasting through your deck as well as advanced draw i'm a really big fan of advanced draw too uh, all of the blue eye stuff is just great, you know. We've got updated versions of all this stuff. Secret rare Return of the Dragon Lords, the White Stone of Ancients. I do want to take a look at Return of the Dragon Lords really quick because this card is just phenomenal. Uh, in dragons and blue eyes or whatever have you, this card is just it it it's a it's a dual prong effect and it's got really cool artwork. And um, I think the original print is a super rare from a starter structure deck structure deck and uh first first editions here is a three stack here for about nine so these always held a relatively good price point i don't really remember this card um being you know uh cheaper it's just it's just a really good card and it is a secret rare and again as time goes on these legendary collection sets become more valuable and more collector stuff so you can even see like the common uh the newest print, the common from 
structured deck rocket revolt is like four bones and then the original og supers are still holding around potentially six four so uh i thought that was that was pretty interesting this is just a really good card this i i wanted to emphasize this because out of out of this set particularly legendary collection kaiba i think this is a really good gem it's not the cheapest but it's a really good card Dragons have always been really predominant and powerful, and there's a lot of good support for dragons, and there always will be because it's just, I think it's a natural favor of Konami, as well as like spellcasters and fiends and all that good stuff. But this is, I definitely wanted to highlight that because it's it's one of the more special cards, I think, out of the set. So you guys should definitely take a look at that. It's really nice they got an updated secret version of White Stone of Ancients. I believe uh, terraforming secret rare, like all across the board, this set is just money. Like over time, these legendary collection sets is just insane. That's why I do go back and review them and kind of review price points. Dragon Shrine, double foolish burial for dragons. If you want to send a vanilla monster, uh, Bezel, the Diabolic Dragons. This is one of my favorite uh, level eight synchros. This card is really great. Uh, surprisingly enough, I actually, this card, this, this card is really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into it really quick because I want you guys to have the opportunity to pause the video and read its effect if you guys aren't familiar with this. Most of you should be familiar with this. This is probably like one of the more infamous level 8 synchro monsters. Really, really good. And, um, this is sitting at about 5-ish bone, pretty much all across the board, 4 pages on the market. But interesting enough, there's actually like a, a gold secret rare version and i normally don't like gold um 2008 2009 series gold is and haunted mine are really the only ones that i really like and it looks like crap in this picture here but this one actually looks really nice this picture definitely does not do it justice i have uh, i think a play set of these and in person this actually looks very very nice in my personal opinion i don't like premium gold i don't know what it is about this card it just it, it looks good and this is actually um I don't know, I, I just, I kind of like it, it's, it's, but, you know, this other secret print from Legendary Collection Kaiba is also, you know, very affordable too, it's about four bones, and then you got, you know, a crap common here that no one cares about, so we're just gonna leave that in the dark, but this is a fantastic card, if you guys don't know about this card, and dark decks, again, are really predominant, dark decks have always been very, very well pronounced in the meta, and they've always had some really great support and some really awesome creative builds throughout the years. Moving along here, we have, uh, again, more blue eye support. Card Demise. This so uh, this is actually my favorite print. Card Demise. It's hit to one. This is still a very good card. Mostly because uh, I like to run it in an, and my anti-meta builds. I'm a big anti-meta player. And this is the highest rarity that we have. And this is this is a good price point for this card. Silver Cry, amazing artwork. Don't really run this card, but it's cool because it's got great artwork. It's a secret rare, and it has it's a quick play, so it's got kind of more variability. Ultra Regeki. I think that this is kind of a, a hidden gem. Uh, I really love Dragon Spirit of White. Now, granted, the other one alternative is a relatively better card. You know, a bigger beat stick. Um, destruction effect this one does back row which is a little less important but it has just amazing artwork and especially in this secret rare rarity it looks it just it really pops the artwork really pops and it's really good um, those were like a dollar for the longest time and now they're up to about three bones so it's definitely seen a significant price increase for that i've been trying to collect a, a high rarity blue eyes deck for quite a while and now and it's fun i like it a lot there's a lot you can do with blue eyes decks there's a lot of draw power which i love you guys probably know by now i'm all about turboing through your deck getting to your resources and it's just it's just fun blue eyes is one of those i think i'm definitely on the side of like the blue eyes fan i'm a blue eyes kaiba fan more than i like yugi better than kaiba when it comes to like anime stuff but for like actually playing the game i like blue i would much rather play blue eyes builds than dark magician builds Dragon Fiend Secret, we got Ultra Thunder Dragon, Ultra Ghosts, Ogre, uh, Org, and uh, this is actually, I'm going to go over this later on in the video, um, but this is uh, Dark Arm Dragon, this is, this is, again, this used to be like a dollar, so this is, you know, tipping up to about three bones, this is increasing, this is a really great alternative to the Phantom Darkness Secret, the updated rarity with the, the attribute Secret Foiling, 
It's pretty great. Uh, Ultra Pro, Secret Rare, Cards of Consonance. Again, just more turbo power for the Blue Eyes build. You got OG Stone of Legend. You have the Secret Rare, and I really like ABCs a lot. ABC is a really fun deck. I think you know it's a it's a pretty pretty cool deck. And they have majority of stuff comes Secret Rare in this. Just desserts. The only Hollow Foil print we have of this uh, fun card for really old school, like Generation One card too. But it's fun for burn decks. We have Secret Rare Azurai Silver Dragon, which is really cool. High rarity we have of this Secret Rare Enemy Controller, Secret Rare Maiden with Eyes of Blue, and that. This I really like the artwork on that, and uh, she's slow. No one really likes her, uh, runs her, but I I like her. It's been a while since I've messed around with blue eyes, but um, I I really like that card a lot. The Monarch Stormforth. This is a really great card because you can use it in general. So like if you have like Vanity Fiend or Jinzo or whatever it is you're trying to to summon, you don't have to use Monarch cards, and it's a quick play. Which makes it more diverse, which is really cool. I'm personally waiting. This card's fantastic, um, but I'm personally waiting for a secret rare version. I'm pretty sure that I forget what versions. I know it comes common, and then of course there's this ultra rare. I think the ultra rare is the only hollow foil. I think all the other versions are are common. Unfortunately, they're just really not good versions. Okay, so there's a super rare from Dark Saviors. There's a crap gold. And then a plethora of commons here. Original print donning from Duelist Alliance. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. So yeah, I just I really want this card in secret. I I'm just gonna kind of risk it and not buy this card until it comes secret because I just don't. You guys probably know my my preference by now if you've been watching my videos for a bit. Uh, I just I'm not a big fan of ultra rares unless like that's like some og ultra rares like talking like gen one and stuff first edition of course i'm all about first edition first edition is a really big deal to me i really um rarely to almost never invest in, in um unlimited stuff lullaby of obedience i'm kind of mixed on this i'm gonna click on this really quick because i want you guys to read the effect there was a time when I was like investing relatively hard in this. I have multiple copies of this just because it's so cheap and it's been so cheap. Um, after reviewing it, kind of going back, maybe it's not quite as good as I thought it was, but um, it's I don't know. You guys can kind of take it by face value. But there was a time where maybe it'll go up. It hasn't. It's been quite a while, uh, probably a couple years now. Sets so I think it's sets like two, almost almost three years old or so, about two years or so. So. Potentially has room to grow, but we'll see. It's definitely not um, one of the the top picks out of the set, but it's always an option. You guys can kind of turn things however you want. More blue eyes stuff here. We're getting into the ultra rares. Not a really big fan of. I love the artwork of Crush Card. This one is probably one of my favorite versions of Crush Card. Funny enough, if you look into the different versions of that. Besides the prize card version, the most expensive version is not even the ultimate rare, like the Duelist Pack Kaiba Ultimate Rares first edition. It's actually the one of the gold series. I think the 2008-2009 gold series is the highest price one, or at least it used to be, which I thought was kind of interesting. Chain Disappearance, this is very situational, um, but I love the artwork. It's Man Eater Bub just getting annihilated by a chain, and the artwork is fantastic, and of course it's a secret rare, so it's beautiful uh rarity and it's really really cheap so i'm i would might look into this i think back in the day when tour guide first dropped people tried to use this against tour guide it wasn't really very effective but maybe it was it was the long time it was like 2012 era it was a long time ago but um i don't know this just because it's price alone i would definitely check this out because this is just so cheap and again for all of the reasons i stated before it's really great i really love the artwork of spell reproduction too Gonna click on this really quick because I'm not mistaking. This is kind of like a two for one deal because you have to pitch. You have to pitch magic cards specifically, which is very unfortunate. I really wish it was you could just pitch any cards in your hand. That'd make it a lot more diverse, especially like, you know, there's a lot of monster effects you can activate in the grave by pitching things to the graveyard. So, really great artwork though. This is the only hollow version of this card. That we have, if I'm not mistaken, and this is a relatively old card too, if I'm remembering correctly. 
But again, this is a very big set, so I'm going to kind of start to speed things up and turbo through because there's a couple other sets that I want to review here and some other random singles. So moving along here, there is uh, only, only a couple more pages. Again, the biggest things in these sets are the secret rares. They're, I'm not a big fan of the ultra rares in these sets. It's pretty much the secret rares exclusively. They have some really, really juicy secret rares in the legendary collection sets. And depending on the timing that you guys go in and pick up these cards, you guys can get them relatively cheap. And it's just, it's trending. It's all trending, guys. You guys have to just watch the trends, get things early. Um, pretty much like, you know, anything else in life. If you get things early, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna make gains. You're gonna get wins. So this is pretty cool. Um, this is an ultra rare, but this is a, the only hollow version that we have. This was originally a common from Shining Victories, I believe. And you guys can take a look into this. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool support. No one is kind of like an, an underknown uh, or like uh, no one really talks about uses this card. Maybe a lot of people don't like it. I think it's good. I think it's fantastic though. Um, it's a level one tuner, and uh, you can like equip it and not equip it. And it's, it's pretty cool. So I check that out. Castle of Dragon Souls. This has really cool artwork. I think has a pretty good effect too. The artwork is amazing. Like I really want to emphasize the artwork on that. It's really cheap too. And for the last page. There is nothing too crazy. All right, so moving on. So really quickly, I want to turbo through Enemy of Justice. I'm trying to make kind of a theme. I want to go back and, and kind of showcase an older set. Older set, I'm talking about, you know, like... I don't remember if it was GX or 5Ds came first. It was GX. GX came first. I'm pretty sure it was Dual Monsters and then GX. So kind of... I'm, I'm, Collector's Market is obviously already on, I wouldn't say pass, some people say pass, but I don't think Dual Monsters is pass, it's still, it's always going to be prevalent, it's Generation 1, it's OG, and it's always going to be a big part of Collector's Market, but GX is definitely full on the fact of being Collector's Value too, so you have you know, all these old school Ultimate Rares, which are really great money, Harpy's Pet Dragon, um, this has got really cool artwork, and you know, these are all really old, and the price points reflect, one thing I did want to look at though, which I think is significant, not only for collector's value, but in the meta. Being an avid anti-meta player myself, and just being fascinated with removal decks in general, Banisher of the Radiance um, is just great. I love the artwork. This is the highest rarity, of course, as an ultimate rare. There's Secret Rare prints, which look really nice, too. But um, this card is just devastating. You can see all like these you know, anti-meta cards here. You got Dinah, Thunder King Ryo, all this stuff. Um... I guess there was a super rare from Dark Revelations 4, but again, I I don't really believe in Dark Rev stuff. It's just like, they don't really have good rarities, and it's all just ridiculously expensive just because it's hard to get. I don't know if it was like under-manufactured or what, but I don't really pay attention to Dark Rev stuff personally. It's just kind of my preference. First first edition here is going to be about 30 bones and only two pages left, so this card is definitely getting eaten up on the market, and I'm not surprised. Enemy Justice is a very old... And this is just an amazing card in general. Um, I'm a really big fan of fairy decks and anti-meta, and it's this is just great. You know, you 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 stock that up with a moon mirror shield, and you're just you can just run over anything. It's pretty great. It's really fun to boost that guy up and just you know run over and remove everything. Some more ultimate rares here. Uh, old school ultimate rares. I'm gonna move on to the second page. There really wasn't anything. I did a quick review of this. I didn't go through every single card and read everything, but I did do a brief review of this set. And they're really outside of Banisher of the Radiance. The only other card that I saw was relatively interesting to me personally was Miraculous Descent. Again, if you're playing. Uh, a lot of the removal fairy stuff, you know, you have Banisher of Radiance, Banisher of the Light. Um, it's, you know, and just fairy decks in general. So it's basically like a, a Call of the Haunted, but for remove stuff, which is, I really love a fairy subtype. I love, this is how, how you can tell it's such an old set because the, the, the terminology is just really classic. But this is an old school ultimate rare, and it's about 
It's kind of slow. Again, it's just, you know, an alternate version for, you know, Monster Reborn or, you know, Call of Honor for move stuff. But it's about four bones before you factor in shipping. So, so relatively cheap. You know, quite a few first editions, you know, three of three here for five. So, for an ultimate rare and, you know, a very old ultimate rare, I think that's relatively reasonable. It's just, it's, um, kind of situational. I mean, when you're playing a removal deck like that, you're almost pretty much going to have. The goal is to have removal presence on the board, so I thought that that was kind of interesting. But besides that, again, I'm just trying to kind of go through these older sets, these GX Dual Monster Era sets. Macrocosmos, we got the first print of Macrocosmos in the set. I, this is one of my all-time favorite Floodgate cards, so it's cool that this card came out. Uh, I guess apparently Icarus Tech came out here. I didn't know. I really like this card a lot. I would definitely go for the DT. There's a DT Rare, I believe. One of the DTs had a rare one, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I was not really too impressed to, impressed with this set. Uh, it I like this set, again, because, you know, it gave us Macros Cosmos, Macro Cosmos, and Banish of the Radiance, and some pretty cool old-school ultimate rares. But overall, it just really wasn't that impressive to me. But again, I just, I'm trying to cycle through all, like, the kind of GX and uh, do a monster of... Uh, sets core sets because i want to you know start showcasing different stuff for you guys kind of keep it diverse really cool artwork i really like the artwork on the packaging all right so moving on jinzo the big boss this card reminds me of psycho mantis from metal gear solid which uh is a really cool game you guys should definitely like metal gear solid too because it's a good one but anyway this card uh so there's some support coming out, apparently. I don't really know where or when. You guys can comment below if you guys want. Um, I'm, I don't really remember. I'm not really knowledgeable of when it is. But all in general, across the board, this card is kind of just going up. There's plenty of different prints here. Uh, we got the Dual Saga one, which is a couple bones. 2008 Series Gold, which is you know holding you know pretty good price points around 4 Dark Beginnings 1, Ultra, of course, it's always kind of been my anniversary pack one. And, of course, the even the Unlimiteds are going, you know, relatively high, about 30 bones, for probably lightly played near mint era um, and conditions. But what I was surprised about, which I, well, actually I'm not too surprised about, is the 2003 Collector's Tin. This was, uh, to this date, my all-time favorite tin. I love, well, the 2002... Original Generation 1 UV Dark Magician tins are probably my all-time favorite tins ever manufactured to date. But I'm really into tins. I like tins a lot, especially tin promos. But this, I remember, like, I don't know if I told you guys the story before. When I was a kid, my parents took me to New York City, and there's this big tour with the rest of there. And I bought, like, several different copies of this tin. And I remember, like, sitting in the back of our big black travel van and opening them up in the back seat and going through the packs and pulling out the promo Secret Rare Jinzos, and I just, I, Jinzo was one of my first favorite cards when I when I originally got into the game, and uh, it's really cool, I actually, there was one of the tins, I actually pulled another Jinzo, so you got the, the, the tin promo Secret, and then there's a Pharaoh Servant pack in the tin, and I remember pulling an unlimited version Secret Rare of, you know, the original uh, print of Jinzo, which was really cool, it was really special for me, I mean, back then, you know, I didn't care about first edition or collector stuff you know i was just a kid having a good old time so it was really really cool and fun to pull like a jinzo out of a jinzo tin from the original core set but even the unlimiteds here for the tin promos they're about 20 bones and then they quickly uh trickle up all the way up to 50 which is just incredible um i definitely wish i would have invested more because for the longest time these were like three five dollars um, they're just so incredibly old. Like, 2003 was 17 years ago. This card's ancient now. So, Jinzo across the board. Just wanted to kind of hi highlight that really quick because it's holding great value and, and slightly increasing, if I'm so bold to say. So, I would definitely kind of get on in this. Um, probably this is because of the new support that's coming out that's been hyped or whatever it may be. But some really great prints of Jinzo. All right, so Dual Saga. I talk about this set a lot. Again, if you guys are unaware, Dual Saga is the only set to date in the TCG that has this 
like laser beam looking, I don't even know what you want to call it, uh, ultra rare hollow foiling. Again, I don't really like ultra rares, but these are, I'll make, I make exceptions for Dula Saga because these actually look really, really great. The uh, um, Blue Eyes is holding the apparently the highest price point here. Kind of knew that this and Dark Magician were going to become somewhat collector's cards. Everything in Dual Saga, and to a certain extent, unless Konami decides to reprint this rarity, is kind of special on its own merit alone. It's very unique. Um, but yeah, they're they're. I think they're definitely starting to kind of uh, cut the edge of the collector's market with the, the DM and the Blue Eyes. We have uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal, which is a really great card. You know, there's a Secret Rare version, there's a Shonen Jump Ultra. There is a uh, DT version. There's a lot of great versions. This is a really great, powerful uh, Dragon Support card. I really wish that it would come off the list it's currently at one, but you know, good reason. It's just it's such a blowout card. We've got Dark Law, Black Luster Soldier, a Steep Sea Diva. This is I sold. A, I just sold a lot of these um, before it came off the list. I bought several really cheap, like a dollar, half dollar. I think I sold the majority of it for about four ish so that was pretty nice profit there got Tsukiyomi. this i wanted to show this so magician of faith is being chewed up pretty bad on the market right now this is not the well the second there there there's a super rare i want to say that this is real like this is the only like attainable hollow print that we have here because the only other hollow print is a super rare from like Champion Pack 2, which is like $300 potentially, apparently. Uh, well, it looks really nice. I love super rares. But, um. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay. Even though there was another ultra rare from Speed Duels. Again, I apologize. I don't. I don't. I don't know anything about Speed Duels. I don't really follow Speed Duels. And I actually just recently found out there's a. You know, someone hooked me up with some, dropped some knowledge on me in the comments in my last video. I didn't know that you could um, play Speed Duel cards in uh, the normal game, the normal, uh, yeah, the normal original OG Yu-Gi-Oh setting. So that's pretty cool. It's uh, interesting that this is um, this has gone up. Uh, and then, you, of course, you have the Dual, Dual Saga one. I would prefer the Dual Saga one just because, again, it has that really unique, cool uh, laser beam foiling and... Yeah, of course, there's a lot of commons. I just had a curiosity. I would like to see the OG Metal Raiders rare. Now, I don't think these look quite as nice, of course, as the Ultras or the Super, but these are literally like Gen 1 original prints. Like, this is like the second core set to be released here in the TCG. Only three pages in general on the market for this. No first editions on the first two pages. I feel like this is going to get pretty pricey for an OG Magician of Faith. Wow. Um, that's incredible. Only one copy on the market right now. Um, apparently, uh, Game of Thrones is hosting it for 100 bones. So who would have thought? Uh, just a rare. Um, but then again, Metal Raiders, Collector's Market, it's a real thing, guys. So just... Be aware, be, be aware. This card was banned for the longest time. I love this card a lot. It's a light, it's a level one, it's a spellcaster. You can retrieve one of your magic cards and recycle it. And it's a flip effect, so it's slower. But I mean, it's it's old. It's It goes back to like the roots of Yu-Gi-Oh. So this is a, this I wanted to highlight it. This is something that I wanted to spotlight from Dula Saga specifically because it's you know increasing in value and it's just, it's just a good card in general and there's a lot of great history to it. It was ran in a lot of infamous old school decks. Uh, one thing of my time that sticks out particularly in my mind was Cookie Cutter Chaos or just Chaos in general. When Invasion of Chaos dropped and we needed lights and darks in the grave this was kind of one of the to go to cards if i'm not mistaken i don't remember exactly when it, it got banned but after invasion of chaos invasion of chaos um i think was the set when they actually started they actually donned the ban list just because with yadakaratsu and sangan and which the black forest and 
Black Luster Soldier and all that, just things things got crazy quick, and people were getting torn up bad, and it was it was pretty crazy. Uh, it was it was a crazy time. Solemn Judgment. Uh, this is a another thing I think is really great. Uh, Mizuki. There's a lot of uh, great versions. I'm actually going to review this, that it, and I'm going to re review another set that has a secret version. And I'll show you that in a bit. I want to take a look at Effect Baylor because I think this is a very critical version of Effect Baylor. There's a lot of awesome versions. Of course, we have the Starlight Rare. I believe that's what it's called now. Um, the new set donned a random Starlight Rare of this, which is you know a collector's card now. And uh, there's the, of course, the, the original Ultimate Rares, which are very beautiful, also have a very pricey, uh, they have a very expensive price tag to go with that. And this, this card's fluctuating pretty pretty rapidly. I think the highest card I ever went was like around almost 1520. We can see now it's all the way down to about 3-ish, 4 but for the longest time, or there was a time when it was sitting at about two, and I picked up several when it was at two because I really believe in this card. This is a grenade generic fan beloved hand trap, really cool artwork, and there's a lot of good rare, there's a lot of good rares of this. But this is this is one of like the cheaper, better rares. I do like the Order of Chaos Special Edition Super Rare promo as well. I like my hand traps in super rare because they still look nice. And when I, I play my hand traps, and I don't, I don't play with like my nice stuff. I'm kind of just like one of the players. Like if I have right, like sometimes like I go out, like maybe like with like Dark World or something like I really really care about, I'll play like max rarity. But it makes me really uncomfortable playing with like first edition ultimate rares and like ghost rares and stuff. I really don't do that like hardly ever because I don't want to decrease the value of my of my you know. Of, you know, the, the, the value of the cards, you know, the wear the wear and tear on the cards. And I don't really trust people handling my cards and stuff. I mean, like, you know, players are players, but, you know, it's just, it's kind of something I do. So I really, I really, you know, like super rare hand traps because they look good and they're, you know, you can, you can play rough with them, you know. Imperial Order, something I'm talk about in a bit. Fossil Dino, this is another great version. There's a Secret Rares and Super Rare Tim promos. Again, Jinzo, some more. Uh, Evil Sore stuff is really great. The original print stuff, you know, got some ultimate rares and secret rares from I think I think it came from like mostly from like Photon Shockwave, which was a really cool uh, old set now too. Really great set. Star Shaman's pretty cool. This is the only version of this to this date, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I really love Dark Lords a lot. And uh, this is pretty cool too. Cosmic Blazer Dragon. This card's really cool artwork. I think there's only two prints of this. Uh, D. They got, uh, of course, Tour Guide, OG Tour Guide. I mean, not OG. Uh, Tour Guide in general, just an amazing card. The um, these things. I forget what what this what it's called. Like the the pack of these. The Hamon Ravel, uh, Raviel, and the Uria. There's uh, some support, I guess, coming out, and there's some, you know, they got some support here, like Fallen Paradise and Dark Summoning Beast, Gozo uh, Gozuki, D Warrior Lady, Judgment Dragon. So, uh, really quick, there's, well, actually, I'm going to review Judgment Dragon in a bit, so let me go back, because Judgment Dragon, I have a little side note that I want to share with you guys on Judgment Dragon. I'm I'm an advent light sworn. I, I love the light sworn engine. I, I mix it in with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I've mentioned it before. I'm 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 really heavily experimenting with Shadals of late. I'm really into Shadals and I've been mixing, you know, Dark World Shadals, Light Sworn Shadals, and kind of just mixing, blending different engines because there's a lot you can do with Shadals and it's just really fun. It's really fun deck to pilot and there's there's still, there's a lot of diversity. There's a lot of things you can mix in with it and just make it really fun. This is a really great set. I really recommend, and I talk about it a lot. I mean, you guys are probably getting <laughs> probably a little irritated about how 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 heavily I cover legendary collection sets and Dusa. But again, I just I feel very passionately about these sets. I think there's a lot of potential, and I mean you can see the trends, you can see the price points. They have been increasing over time, 
And I'm not the only one that is talking about this. P players are smart. You guys are smart. You guys know. You have the knowledge. You guys make the investments, and you guys are seeing it before your eyes. And uh, really quick, I want to review Harpy's Featherstorm. This is great. This is a phenomenal card. This is one of those cards that like this is kind of just a, it's so cheap too. It's like a little over a dollar. Anyway, uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be with. Uh, harpies, you know, you can use it with black wings or you know whatever, whatever other win wing beast um, decks you want to play. Obviously, naturally with like the card name is built for harpies, but this is a really great card. Uh, you can pause the video, read this. I think this is just a fantastic card. Pretty cool artwork too, and it used to be a solo print. It looks maybe it got like a common in one of the the. Legendary Duelist sets, probably. So, got a Super Rare and Sisters of the Rose. Okay, so I, anyway, I'd so prefer this. This is a higher rarity, more unique rarity with the very unique Duelist Saga Ultra Rare Hollow Falling, anyway. So, again, this is just one of those cards that really sticks out to me. I think it's really good. I think you guys should check it out because it's really cheap right now. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of always been cheap, it's not really going up. But I think it definitely has potential because I think it's just kind of one of those hidden gems. Soul Charge as well. Uh, I really like this card a lot. This card's banned. It's been banned for a while. But got really cool artwork. Devastating effect. It's definitely coming off the ban list eventually. I mean, I haven't believed it. Everything comes off the ban list eventually. It's just a matter of if it gets errated or not. This is pretty cool too, so no one really talks about this card and Contract with Don Thousand. You can pause the video and read this. I think it's kind of an obscure effect, but it's really interesting. The artwork is really cool. Of course, you got Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and then it's like the name is really cool, like Legacy of the Duelist. This is a solo print too, so that's another thing I want to emphasize. This is a solo print only from Duelist Saga, so this is the only set that you can get this from, and it's really cheap. Uh, there's not really a lot of stacks here on the first page, but, you know, there's five plus pages. So you guys can dig into that. So I would definitely recommend taking the time to look into this card, maybe investing in it if you guys so choose to. Another one is Contract with Don Thousand, which, to my understanding, is still probably a solo print as well. An exclusive for Dusa uh, solely. And it's a pretty cool card, too. Here it is right here. If this is the card that I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So again, kind of an obscure effect. don't really like the artwork in this one, but its effect is kind of obscure and kind of out there. It's kind of interesting. It's still, it's a solo print, so you can only get it from Dusa. And this is even cheaper. Not really a lot of stacks, but five plus pages. So um, I would... Definitely look into this. I would favor Legacy of the Duelist because the artwork is a lot better and I think has a, a, a little bit more attractive effect. But I would definitely, because they are solo prints and because Duelist Saga is a special set, in my opinion, alone because it's rarity, being the only rarity in all the TCG, I would check it out. Dandelion. Dandelion is, I like the secret rare dandelions from uh, one of the legendary collection sets. I think it was either like 5Ds or legendary collection. Um, I can't remember, but I like the secret rare ones a lot. There's also an ultimate print, which is going for good money right now. Doom Caliber Knight, I really like this a lot. There's also the Turbo Pack Ultra Rares, which are, you know, really nice too. But uh, this still looks very, very nice because the Dusa uh, rarity, which is really cool. And this is just an old school um, anti meta card that I just I, I really like still to the date. Um, I haven't ran him in a while, but it's really cool. Effect Veiler is really great too. So another kind of hidden gem I think is a, I'm sorry, not Effect Veiler, Clear Effector. You can pause the video, read this uh, effect. I think it's really great. Um, the draw power is nice, you know, but what's cool is that the this that the synchro monster you use for the summon they use this as material it can't be destroyed by card effects which is pretty blowout especially if you bust out a pretty beastly synchro 
And this is, again, a solo print, only from Dula Saga. So you can kind of notice that I'm, I'm talking about these cards because they're solo prints and Dula Saga is getting old. It's no longer being manufactured. And if these cards go off, it's going to be relatively difficult to get them. And the price trends are going to reflect on that. So they're really cheap right now so i mean this this card the uh, clear effector specifically because it's been so cheap and it's hasn't really gone anywhere i think it's really good again it's just one of those things that i'm kind of like i kind of feel like i stand alone there's not a lot of people that like this card i'm personally a believer I, I like it a lot and it's really cheap so i mean i have i have stacks i have stacks this card and i'm just kind of waiting I heard that there is like new support for the this the bro hunter or hunter set or core or anything. This is kind of interesting. They do like a new uh, swarm kind of play style. I ran into one online uh, a couple days ago. It was actually really interesting to see with all the new stuff. So maybe this will go up. Maybe not. Power wall. This is a uh, good for burning into the graveyard. It's pretty cool. Uh, this card was a lot more popular when it first came out. But this is another solar print, if I'm not mistaken. White Veil is pretty cool. It's uh, I don't remember exactly what it does, but I remember it, it's a it's a big risk card. It's a pretty big gamble card, but when you pull it off right, it's a pretty big reward. I wanted to say today, uh, I didn't know. So today, I discovered. Uh, Facebook Marketplace. I had never really used it before, and I was originally actually looking for uh, I was looking for getting into getting a new acoustic guitar, but you know I I was kind of messing around there, and I decided to look up some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, and I ended up finding a seller that was selling uh, first edition uh, Kaiba and Yugi Reloaded starter decks, which you know has Ultimate Rare and Ultimate Rare, Ultimate Rare Dark Edition and Blue Eyes, which I'll actually show that to you really quick. I, I, I showcase it a lot, so you guys are probably know about this, but just to kind of give you a, a visual of what I'm talking about, if you guys aren't familiar with this set, I'm a huge investor in the generation starter deck so you know generation one og 2002 kaiba yugi um pegasus and joey and then you know gen gen 2 the evolution kaiba yugi evolution and then this being in my opinion gen 3 three loaded ones only specifically for this for um ultimate rare blue eyes this is the only ultimate rare version we have it's not the best it's not the best artwork of Blue Eyes. They definitely could have chose a, a more significant artwork piece. But again, this this is very old. I want to say, I, I think, I can't remember exactly what year, but I know it's getting up there in, in age. And this is this is, just, this is going to be a collector's card. I just know it. I know it. I'm believing it. I'm putting it into for, into for it. Um, fruition it's it's gonna happen it's it's already it's already around like around 10 almost 9 10 for the first first editions 8 and then jumps it up to 10 so this card so i would pick i was picking these up in 2017 and a little bit you know after i was my rule is was five i was picking up first edition prints of this for five and for dark magician more so four four five but mostly four for dark magician that was kind of my rule five for blue eyes four for dark magician first edition only because this is collector's market we're talking about, guys. You have to do first edition. Can't put emphasis on that enough. But anyway, this is the what I bought today. So they're sealed, of course, first edition. And the set's getting up there in age. And it was 35 bones. So I, I dropped 35 bones in cash, went, met the lady up, and uh, I bought these. And, I, and I'm really proud about that. I think that's a really good. I did some research. I really did kind of had a hard time finding these. There's plenty of sealed unlimited, but when it comes specifically to the first editions, it's a lot more difficult to find these, the Yugi and Kaiba reloaded starter decks. And the only ones I found that I found first edition were on eBay and they were around fifty dollars. 
for uh, for each one for sealed first edition. So I got one copy first edition Kaiba, one copy first edition Yugi for thirty five. I dropped thirty five. So I think that was a good investment. I again just I, I I'm telling you the story because I want you guys to know, like I back what I say. What I'm telling you guys, I actually I invest money into. I invest time into. I'm not just telling you these things because. Um, I, I think it's a good idea. Like I'm, I'm risking with you guys. Like I, I'm making these these investments. So I just wanted to kind of tell you guys that, and you know, I, I thought it was it was cool. I love doing stuff like that. I love doing kind of like secondhand stuff with other people. And anyway, I was just excited about market price. Uh, Marketplace is pretty cool. I thought that was fine. I just just now discovered that. But anyway, so Dark Arm Dragon, a uh, really awesome beast card. Uh, you have you know OG Fan of Darkness first editions holding great price point. Nice healthy alternative again is going to be the legendary collection. Secret rares from uh, legendary collection Kaiba, which we I talked about briefly. Really like the uh, 2009 gold series as well, but um, I honestly like and, and the ultimate rare of course is you know great money being the ultimate rare, but this is like the ideal one I, I would say would be the legendary collection Kaiba one. But you know again you have these other three versions which are really great too. I didn't know about this. I was really excited. I wanted to click on it and see if it was good, but it has a trash effect. I really don't think this is good. Um, so I was kind of disappointed in that. But anyway, this is, a, this is a cool card, so you guys should check it out. Okay, so Judgment Dragon. What I was going to say about Judgment Dragon is, so, you know, of course we have Alter Rare and Secret Rares, First Edition, Light Destruction, the original set, you know, Dawning Light Swarms and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. These are great. They're also very, very, they have, you know, very heavy price tags because they're old, they're high rarity, and they just look fantastic, and Judgment Dragon is just a great OG card. But what I was going to talk about was the healthy alternative, because we don't really have nice stuff. You have, you know, Crap Gold, you know, Ultra Rare, Gold Series 3, Common, 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 was the Dual Saga one specifically. Now... Granite, it is just still an ultra rare, but remember, it is dual saga ultra rare, so it has that special hollow flooring that's unique solely to this set, and this is very cheap. So with the secret rare and the ultimate rare being very nice, but also being very costly, I think this is going to be the ideal choice to use. Personally, this is what I use in my light swarm builds, uh, because I just I haven't taken time or the money to invest in a nicer version of judgment Jack, which i do want to do eventually right now i just am not willing to spend so much money um on uh jd at this moment right now so just wanted to say that really quick so premium pack two this is kind of interesting because premium pack one there's not really anything that's like hugely valuable in premium pack one i think they have like one or two cards that are just uh pretty blowout but premium pack one a uh, two is crazy you have uh sen genjin the secret rare which is holding a crazy price point you have elemental hero um because Ken kenosope i don't know how to pronounce that but the which they also come in other versions too in the same set like you can see down here there's like the super rare which is like nothing and the super over here, which is like nothing, so I thought it was kind of interesting. But the premium packs, it's kind of like um, I don't want to say not Dark Legends. What was Retro Pack? Retro Pack was what I was thinking. I want to start to review like really obscure sets, like sets that people kind of forget about, like little side sets, side sets. Because I think there's a lot of cool, like, hidden value and just, I don't know, I, I, I'm really, I'm really interested in, obs in obscure sets. So one of these videos, I want to, probably, probably my next video, I want to dip into Retro Pack because I think that's just another kind of long forgotten obscure set and, you know, you know, like Dark, Le Dark Legends, um, really mostly like, just like stuff like that, I don't know. So I just wanted to kind of showcase this because I think really talks about this and there's just huge value in the set. Mostly for the secret rares, of course. Um, Mizuki is just this great. You know, I I I love Mizuki. I'm pretty sure there's a DT, a dual turbo version of Mizuki, which is what I run in my zombie builds, which I like. Um, this is I would have gotten this, but it's it's expensive, and it's been relatively expensive like for a while. And um, yeah, there it's just I don't know. This is kind of just an obscure set. 
Really quick, I wanted to go over this card. I think this card's pretty good. Uh, you know, those crazy hero players are out there, and, you know, you know those, those hero boys, hero fanboys all over the place. This is uh, the Secret Rare version of this card. It's got pretty cool artwork, and I think for what it is, it's got a pretty cool effect, too. It's really cheap. So the, the price point is kind of the biggest thing that, you know, made me want to showcase this specifically. So if you guys believe in this card, if you think it has potential to go up, I mean, why not? It's really cheap, and I think it's relatively good. And again, it's just a hero card, so it's high rarity. So pretty cool set. So I wanted to talk about, just really quick, I had an idea. So what do you guys think about a My Valentine Harpies structure deck? So we just got, you know, Shadal Showdown which is great. I've invested heavily, specifically in the first edition versions of that. That is going to be just money all across the board in a couple years. Structure decks always go up in price after they go out of manufacturing print, and that is just that is a gold mine. If you guys can find first edition copies of Shadal Showdown, it's kind of hard now because Target and Walmart kind of cleared them out. They're getting older. But uh, there's definitely, you got to look around, and you can find them. And I would definitely recommend that. But I I think it'd be really cool. I just I really like like my Valentine is one of my favorite female anime like OG characters. She kinda like was the OG, like, you know, female character. I really like Harpies a lot. I think it was my last video I talked about Harpies and just how much I really appreciate the artwork and you know, you have the whole history with the uncensored original artworks and the OCG in Japan and just really cool. A lot of cool rich history. Uh, and it's just a, it's, it's a, a, I think it's a relatively popular fan base deck. I mean, there's a lot of people that like Harpies. They just, they don't really want to play it because it's, it's not, uh, it's not that it's not good. It just, it struggles. It's a little bit slower and it, it just needs more support. So comment below. Tell me what you guys think. Would you guys be on board for a My Valentine themed Harpy structure deck that actually brought in some like meta support? That would really like hyper boost harpies because I think there's a lot of people that like harpies. They just it just needs some more cards to kind of speed up the deck and just make it better. So I think that was an interesting thought. I would really like Konami to make like a My Valentine based themed uh, harpy support structure deck. I think that'd be really cool. And I mean, who's to say that they're not? I mean, they just made a Shadal Showdown deck, you know, because people voted and everyone really liked Shadals and Shadals was a big popular thing. So. Maybe it can happen. The white Mexican is a dreamer, so we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. So really quickly, uh, this is Structured Deck Lost Sanctuary. This isn't really a big significant deck. It is to me because this deck dropped. That This was the deck, I believe, that dropped right before or right after uh, Gates of the Underworld, which is my all-time favorite Structured Deck. I'm a huge Dark World fanboy, and... There's nothing really valuable in this, but the Master Hyperion is it, this is still a really good card. I like this card a lot. I mean, it's not nearly as good, obviously, back in the day, like 2012, when this card was just like running over everything and it was really big, uh, big time. It was a big shot, but this this card, I, I just really like this card a lot. Again, it's level eight fairies, and it just it mostly for nostalgia value. It really brings me back to. Um, you know, old, old, old time Yu-Gi-Oh for me, and I don't know, I just, there's something about it, I really wish that I had these sealed, because they're relatively expensive now, I mean, they're, you know, they're super old, they're like eight plus years old now, but I'm really big into star, structure decks, collecting starter decks and structure decks, first edition sealed is, is kind of a, a big side investment for me, so uh, if you guys have this sealed, like, good on you, because, uh, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. But just wanted to, just, I don't know, just kind of just kind of support my ideals on structure deck collection uh, investments. But so Imperial Order is it's been a while since I reviewed this card. There are some pretty cool cool versions. Um, again, Dual Saga, you know, talked about you know talking to death day. But the Legend of Collection 3, Yugi's World, another great set. Definitely check that out. It's holding pretty good value as well. The OG Secret Rare from Pharaoh Servant. Now, granted, remember, 
In these Generation 1 core sets, we only got two secret rares per booster pack. For PSV specifically, it was Imperial Order, Imperial Order and Jinzo. And this is probably one of the most infamous floodgates out there. I mean, I think this rivals with Skill Drain, Macrocosmos. There's a lot of big floodgates out there. And this was banned forever. Um, I think it was in maybe like 2017, I want to say, or something it got unbanned. It hasn't been unbanned for too long. And, you know, it's the Unlimiteds aren't really holding anything. But it's when you get to the first editions, the first editions have... Now, it's not as crazy as it was. It was almost $100 the last time I reviewed it. And I, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, the, it's about 30 bones for the first first edition. 35. 34. So we see the first first editions for 34. And it kind of just trickles up after that. Only Only one page remaining after that. So... We're definitely finally seeing this fall into the collector's market, which, I mean, it's about time. This card is ancient as hell. It's got really cool artwork. It has, you know, it got errated, unfortunately, which hurt the card a lot. But it's really old, really cool artwork, and high rarity being a secret rare. So, just wanted to showcase that really quick. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you guys are making some amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. I have social media. If you guys want to uh, message me on Facebook, that is the easiest and quickest way to get a hold of me. Please, if you have some ideas or if you just want to talk Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm all about making Yu-Gi-Oh friends all around the world. And I just love talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a great passion and a big hobby in my life. Please, please stay safe out there. This has been a showcasing by the White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.